Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is AP Physics Essentials video 17. It's on resistivity, which is the property of material that opposes flow of charge. And so if we were to break apart a flashlight like this, you could see that it's not glowing. That means that there's no flow of charge in this circuit. And if we were to just test different materials, so let's take a little bit of gold and we were to slide it into that circuit, we would see that it lights up. So we know there is flow of charge. And so we would say gold has a really low resistivity. It's allowing that flow to move through it. If we were to try a different material like glass in our circuit, we would see that it's not lighting up. So it would have high resistivity. And if we were to take something in the middle, a semiconductor like silicon, we would find that some flow occurs. And so we would say this has resistivity that's going to be somewhere in the middle. And so if we define it, what is it? It's essentially a property of material that opposes electric flow or flow of charge. And so what determines that is the structure of the material itself. It's how the atoms and the molecules are arranged. And it's innate in the material. Each material is going to have a different resistivity. Now how could we change that? Well, the amount of material would be one way, but another way to change it is temperature. And so material, since their, their resistivity is based on their atomic structure, as we change temperature, then we can change the resistivity as well. And so the tendency is to confuse this with resistance. And so let's briefly talk about what a resistor is and how it resists flow of current in a circuit. And so if we diagram a resistor like this, what are the major parts? Well, you're going to have conductors on either side. You're then going to have the cross-sectional area of the resistor. You're going to have the length of the resistor. And then you're finally going to have this resistivity, which is measured in ohm meters. And that's going to be innate in the material itself. And so all three of these, length, cross-sectional area, and resistivity, contribute to the overall resistance of the resistor. And so why is that? Again, it's the material and how the atoms are arranged on the inside. And so you can measure this for any material, but you're also going to have to calculate cross-sectional area and the length. And so we could look at a table of different materials and look at their resistivity. And so copper and aluminum, you could imagine, are going to have really low resistivity. They don't oppose flow of that electric charge. And so if we look at copper, it's 1.68 times 10 to the negative eighth. It's a really, really small number. But we would say it's slightly smaller than aluminum, and so copper is going to be a better conductor of electricity. If we look at silicon, it's going to have a value that's somewhere between that and a insulator like glass. An insulator is going to have a really high resistivity. It's opposing almost all of that flow. And so the other thing that you should always look for in a table like this is the temperature. And so it's going to show us what the temperature is. And that's because the resistivity of materials will change radically as the temperature changes. And so for material that are metals, as we increase the temperature, we're also going to increase that resistivity. In other words, the best conducting metals are going to have the lowest temperature. But if we look at a semiconductor, we find the opposite. As we increase temperature, its resistivity is actually going to go down. And so you could take certain metals, superconducting metals, and they're going to have really essentially no resistivity. And that's what we see here, a magnet hovering on top of this superconducting metal. And so did you learn to choose the correct amount of data you would need to measure resistivity in a material? And so you would use something not like a light bulb, but you would use a more precise measuring device to measure the resistance of a resistor. You would then look at the um, cross-sectional area and the length, and then we could simply solve for resistivity. And so do you know what it is? It's innate in all material. It's based on their structure, and it opposes flow, and I hope that was helpful.